This is the new Rolls-Royce Ghost and it's a bit like Kensington Palace and the Ghost is aimed at the younger Rolls-Royce buyer. Doesn't mean it's cheap though. It starts from £250,000 and in this video I'm going to give it a jolly good reviewing. Let's start this video by talking about the new Ghost design. So every part of this car is completely new. Nothing is carried over from the old Ghost and it's bigger than before as well. So it's slightly wider. In fact at its widest point it's almost two meters wide. They have the back, they have tapered it in so it doesn't have a big bulbous bottom. The back end is quite plain looking, but in places it is lifted by plenty of chrome right here and around the tail lights and chrome surrounds for the exhaust. And I use the car by sticker truth to just illustrate that within there are two proper exhaust pipes on each side. Moving down the side, we come to the alloy wheels. So they start at 19 inches, which is way too small for this car. These are the top size, the 21 inches. And I think at the very least, you've got to have these fitted, otherwise it'll just look underwheeled. This car has a very strong shoulder line, gives it plenty of presence from the side. And once again, we've got chrome just highlighting it, so it isn't just a big slab of black. And huge chrome door handles, which are in the middle of the car, because obviously, look, hinged rear doors makes it dead easy to get in. We'll come to the interior in a moment. I mean, it's a lovely looking interior, isn't it? Just shut the doors, which is done electrically. Go on. Five and a half meters. But you can get an extended version, which is even longer. It's 170 millimeters longer. Now, here's the controversial bit, the front. I think it looks quite a bit more aggressive than the old Ghost. Here's a picture of the old Ghost. What do you think? You know, I said that every panel's new. There is one thing that isn't, is the spirit of ecstasy. The inside of this is gorgeous. The quality of the materials is impeccable. The leather is just so soft. The stitching, even though it's done by hand, is just so straight. The wood veneers, they're solid and thick. This one has a unique detail in it. It's like shiny flex. It's gorgeous. And everything that looks like metal is metal. They're solid. It just feels wonderful. This is solid as well. I like this metal strip here on the top of the grab handle for the door. Even the door pockets, look, they're lined with leather. Contrasting leather as well, the orange to match this on the dash. I like the dials as well. They're behind this glass screen and they're part normal physical dials. So the outer ring and the little illuminated bits for the increments of speed. But then the actual dial itself and the needle is digital, but it looks old fashioned and analog. Great. Infotainment system, it's basically BMW's iDrive because BMW owns Rolls-Royce. But with a Rolls-Royce understated font on it, it's easy to use. You can use the swivel wheel or you can use it as a touchscreen as well. This thing is just glorious to sit in and it's impossible to find anything to complain about apart from one thing for the indicators and the windscreen wipers and the electrical operation of the steering wheel. It does just feel more cheap. But like normal carish. And I found another thing as well. A little bit of a crease in this bit of leather. It's the only imperfection I can find. It's as if this particular cow spent its time like leaning up the fence. Dead easy. You want to let air in and out of the air vents. You pull the organ stops. The steering wheel, it looks like a piece of artwork. Yet there are still buttons on it, but they're, they're just blended in nicely. It's a great, great job. The little speakers around for your Bluetooth. That's metal. This is metal and this is leather, your grab handle. This lighting here is like something you'd find in Claridge's hotel. And the seats, huge armchairs. Obviously they are electrically operated and almost infinitely adjustable. You could spend hours in these seats. So, as I said at the beginning, 
Well, this isn't a long wheelbase version. Look, I've got absolutely loads of knee room. I don't know why you'd need the extended wheelbase version. It really doesn't need to be any longer. No, the opulence just continues in the back. So once again, the air vents around solid metal, lovely with your organ stops. You've got your climate control here as well. It's just gorgeous and all the materials are super expensive feeling, thick carpet. You can really relax. This actually has a three-seater configuration, which means that if you really needed to, you could squeeze someone into the middle seat which would be very in Rolls Royce. There's a little grab handle in the back of the front seat so you can actually hold on when you're getting into the car. One thing this car has is the embossed spirit of ecstasy on the back of the picnic tables. It also has, check it out, the rear entertainment system. So you get a big screen on each side and you can control all the car's entertainment through this rear screen using the controller under here, which is just like that in the front. I'll just put that away. Another extra this car has is this, look, a fridge. And I really like what they've done with this. Normally the fridges you have in cars vertically, and then you have your little champagne glasses. And I like the way they're held in by expensive feeding clips. You don't just get normal blinds in a Rolls Royce. You have actual curtains. To open the rear doors, then you just pull onto the handle and it opens using a motor. It's actually got a little gyroscope in that, so even if you're on a, an incline or a decline, it can actually control the door and the speed at which it opens, so it doesn't suddenly just fling open or go too slowly. So the load capacity is 507 litres, which is quite a lot, but you do get even more boot space, nicely trimmed, luxurious carpet, which is nicer than in my flat, and this scuff plate here, so you don't damage your paintwork when you're lifting things in and out. The opening is quite wide, which is handy, because I'm gonna have to climb in here to search for, you can get a starlight headliner. We've got hundreds of LEDs just in the roof lining, which mimic a night sky. And if you wait long enough, you'll see the occasional shooting star. So much work has been done in this car to make it as quiet as possible. Look how thick the double glazing is on the windows. Now, on top of that, you've got 100 kilos of soundproofing material throughout the car's cabin. There's even soundproofing within the tyres. But Rolls went one step further. It actually measured the sound frequency resonance of all the components of the car and made sure they matched up so that you don't get slightly different sounds standing out within the car. Just almost every single part of the car. In fact, they got to one stage where they made it too quiet that it made passengers feel a little bit car sick because you didn't get the sensation that you were actually moving. So they dulled a little bit of sound back in to keep everyone nice and comfortable. You can raise and lower the spirit of ecstasy manually if you want to by pressing a button on the car's infotainment system. And you can actually get it in solid silver or gold plated. And you might be thinking, wait a minute. So this ghost logo here. Now Rolls-Royce could have just painted that on, but that would have been too easy. Instead, they took 10,000 man hours designing and developing this very special feature, which actually involves 90,000 laser etched holes in this wooden veneer. And behind that, you've got 152 LED and it shines light through evenly so you get this starlight effect here and when you turn the car off it completely disappears and it comes back when you turn it back on again. This car has the upgraded bespoke audio system so you have 18 speakers and these ones here and so have a really nice metal grill of them which is so sharp you can actually file your nails on them. You get 1300 watts of power there's also two exciter speakers in the roof of the car and it uses the hollow sills to act as a subwoofer to boost the bass and then there's a few microphones dotted about the place to pick up unwanted frequencies and cancel them out so you get a pure clean. The Ghost gets Rolls Royce's new microenvironment purification system. So the car uses sensors and it can tell if you're driving through an environment that is a bit polluted and then it will automatically put the car's ventilation system onto recirculation mode. And it diverts the air through a nano fleece filter to remove all those nasty impurities. As with the Rolls Royces, you have an umbrella in each rear door. So for the Ghost, you can actually choose your own design for the umbrella. If you don't put this umbrella back properly and then you shut the car's door, you could be in for £8,000 worth of damage. That's coming from someone who had a Rolls Royce, made that mistake, as with the Phantom and the Cullinan, the Ghost uses Rolls Royce's 6.75 litre twin turbo V12 engine. It has 571 horsepower and 850 newton metres of torque, and it drives all four wheels by an eight speed automatic gearbox. And it's been designed to be super smooth so you don't feel it when you accelerate. From the glass, ooh, look at that. And if I rev it,
finally see what this Rolls Royce Ghost is like to drive. Not much of a problem in this, the air suspension just deals with them so well. And I can just cruise down my little driveway. I say little, it's probably about half a mile long. And I am faced with a slight problem. It's the fact that this car is so long that I might have to have my nose out on the road in order to be able to see what's coming around the corner. But let's find out. It's so, so quiet in here. I can't feel the road beneath me at all. It's like I'm just floating around in utter tranquility. In fact, I imagine this is what it felt like when I was in the room. It's as though this car is like your own amniotic sac. The, the turning circle on this car is still 3.4 meters, which is slightly better than a Phantom, which is 3.8 meters. Oh, the steering is it's just gentle and easy. This car does have surround view cameras, so they will help me, and obviously parking sensors and stuff. But at the moment, I'm caught behind some truck that's loading. But it doesn't topple over either. It doesn't fill out of its depth. And if you need to get a move on, this engine is pretty powerful. I'm gonna floor it. A little bit of a roar from the exhaust. And it does go all right. Oh my gosh. Not 60, 4.6 seconds. But it doesn't actually feel that quick because you're so isolated from the sense of speed. One of the things you have to love about Rolls Royces is that they have their own unique way of doing stuff. For instance, you don't have a rev counter, but instead a power reserve gauge. So when you're just tootling along and not really pressing the throttle, you have 100% of power reserve. Seats are super comfy. You can put the massage function on. And one of the things I really like about the massage function is that it just stays on. I'm actually gonna put the cruise control on because it just means that I don't have to worry about setting the pace. The car actually uses a camera and a radar to keep a safe distance from the car in front, and it'll even work in stop-start traffic. There is one thing that is missing from this, though. It doesn't have that function where it'll automatically steer to keep you between the white lines. It's a bit of a shame. I don't know why it doesn't have that. Maybe it's something to do with the fact that most people who buy these cars probably have a chauffeur, and you do want your chauffeur to at least try to earn his money. Click on the pop-out banner up there to get a car out to see how much you can save on a new car. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. Also, comment below any kind of other videos you'd like us to do.